Pastor Mike Porter. Amen. Amen. I tell it, we say it long enough, we'll be here to believe it. <laughs> Acts 3, 19 through 21. Everybody who's sitting around waiting on Jesus to come back, I want you to read these three verses right here, okay? <laughs> Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Heaven must receive for how long? Until the times of restoration of all things. How long is Jesus stand in heaven? Until the time of restoration of all things. Wait, 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 hold on. I thought we were taught. No, Jesus is coming back to restore all. We're going to sit here and come to church and play our little thing and sing our little songs and put on our dress and let's get our hat going and do all that. And we're just going to hang out here and be all right till Jesus comes back. No, here's the plan. The sons will manifest. And the sons of dominion, by sons I mean men and women, the sons of dominion will speak restoration to the planet. When Jesus comes back, he is coming back. But when he comes back, he's going to come back to sons who are manifesting his glory and are moving in the restoration of all things. Imagine. I ain't trying to mess up anybody's thinking in here. I'm not trying to do that. And if you want to hold on to Jesus coming back, it's okay. I love you anyway. But think about the principle. We actually believe that Christ, the Christ, the centerpiece of everything God, ever did, was going to come back to planet Earth and rule in a mediocre, divided system. We actually taught that there'd be people who would refuse to obey him, right? And that he would sit on the throne of David for a thousand years. I'm not saying he won't sit on the throne of David. I'm just saying, can you imagine for a moment Jesus coming back to a planet Earth who's just torn apart and in distress and all of these things? No. He's coming back to an earth that's what? Restored. Restored. God's heart has always been what? Restoration. Where is God trying to get you back to? Back to your original position. He's trying to get you back into Eden, which means what? Paradise. The thief on the cross, what did Jesus say to him? Today, you'll be with me in paradise. In other words, I'm going to put you back together just like you were before you fell apart. Amen. That's why the thief said what? Remember me. You divide that word up. R-E and then member. What's that mean? Put me back together again. Amen? Is that making sense to anybody? Amen. Come on, is it making sense? Okay. All right, Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So here's the thing. Romans 8, 5. Set your mind on what? Those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So here's the deal. You get the four gospels, which you give you the surrounding of what happened to Jesus. Then you get all the letters in the Bible which tell you what happened on the cross. And if there's one big theme of Paul's writings, it's those three words right there. Set their minds. Paul over and over and over and over and over again keeps telling us to what? Set our minds on things above. To what? Not to get our minds on how heaven operates, how the things of God operate, so that what? We can operate here like it operates there. That's what Jesus did. He came and showed us it's possible for a man to operate on the level of the kingdom of God. And now he's made many sons. But the sons don't know the impact of, that they have. And they don't know who they fully are in their father. Because really, I'm going to say it, and I've been a part of it. We've been lied to. We've been deceived. Yes. Into thinking that we were less than who we were. Yes. And I'm going to be frank with you. Sometimes I get a little mad about it, but it's okay. Amen. But I have to get mad at me because I used to preach it too now. I ain't putting me in, I ain't talking about nobody condemning nobody. And I'm saying if anybody's still preaching, I'm not condemning them. I'm just saying, if you rightly divide the word, we've been lied to about a lot of things. I don't think intentionally, I don't think intentionally. 
I just think that now is a time on planet Earth when the person of Jesus is rising to the forefront and the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover the planet Earth again, our realm. But here's the key. Set your minds. So I've showed this many times, but i got new people here. I don't think it's ever seen it. I want you to see this right here. Here's what the Lord told me this week. I was asking him. I said, Lord, I mean, you know, are we going to see in our lifetime, are we going to see some of these things manifest, you know? Um, you know how you get praying like that? You get right pitiful with God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? Stop looking for the big things and start focusing on the little things. And here's what he showed me. Little things add up to big things. Mm -hmm. I read the other week, it was about dieting. I was reading about dieting. And it said if you have one cookie a day, one, one 200 calorie cookie a day, which is average cookie, and you have that cookie seven days a week, 365 days a year, at the end of the year, you have consumed as much fat as three cans of water. A little thing adding up to a big thing. And the Holy Spirit really spoke to me and said, if you want to see big things, you have to start doing little things. It's the little things that you don't do. In other words, if you want to get into the Word more, you don't start by reading a book a day. You start by reading a few verses a day. And you add and add and add. But anyway, here we go. This is my spirit. This is my soul. Now, when we say soul, we mean mind, will, and emotions, okay? This is my flesh. When I got saved, this man got saved right here. This spirit man got saved. He is saved. He'll always be saved. This man right here is being saved. By what? The renewing of my mind. This man over here, flesh, ain't no hope for him. He ain't going to never, ever be saved. You're going to get a new body that's not flesh one day. Amen? Amen. This man ain't going to be saved. So what did the church, what have we been trying to do for all these years? We've been trying to save this man. Yeah. By what? Stop doing this. Stop going there. If you stop smoking, you stop drinking, you stop cussing. I'm not going to say those things are right to do. I'm just saying you can't fix this man right here. He can't be fixed. But watch. This man's not in charge. This man's not in charge. This is the man that's in charge of you. Your mind, your will, your emotions. And where you set this man determines which way you go. If you set this man toward the flesh, guess what you're going to walk in? The flesh. Is that man still saved? Yes. Where are you walking? In the flesh. If you set this mind, this man toward this man, what are you going to walk in? The spirit. Here's the good news. If you set your mind on this man long enough and walk in the spirit long enough, it will affect this man over here. Because what will happen? If your spirit and your soul are headed this way, your body ain't got no choice. But he can't go this way. He can't separate from you, can he? So what will happen? He'll do it reluctantly. He ain't going to like it one little bit. He's going to slide over, slide over, and whisper in your ear and try to get you to come back. But eventually one day, he's going to have to go with you where you're going. And this is how you get led by the Spirit. Little things by little things. I change my mind. That's where the word repent comes in. I change my mind, and I decide to follow after the things of the Spirit. Over here is where the Father's realm is demonstrated. Right here is the man who pulls heavenly things down to planet Earth. This is why Paul, I need to look it up. Before we finish this series, I'll look it up. How many times he says, set your mind. Renew your mind. Right? So who's in charge? I am. You know the problem with this right here? It just took the devil out of the whole thing, didn't it? Man. See, long as we got a devil, we can blame somebody else. I don't ever have to change anything. Because I can always blame somebody. Don't we love that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Who's making the decisions? Me. Every trouble I ever got in started here in my mind. Nobody sins here until it starts right here. Mm -hmm. So you got it? This man, he is saved. He is forever in Jesus. There is no sin in your spirit man. None. Okay? And this is where the church turned away so many people because we always looked at people according to the flesh. But what did Apostle Paul say? 
from now on. I'm not going to look at any man according to the flesh. Well, because the flesh is crazy. It's up and it's down. It's happy. You can be happy at 1 o'clock and at 1.30. You can be crying. It's all over the place. And guess what? It's had all your life to develop habits and desires and all this kind of stuff. Your spirit man comes alive. The spirit of God wants to pull you toward the things of God, but he won't make you go. The flesh wants to pull you toward the things of the flesh. You get to decide. And really, that's good news. So why, that, why do you read your Bible? Why do you pray? Why do you communicate with God? To renew your mind. mind. Change your mind. We repent all the time. Change my mind. Does that help anybody? That demonstration? So what Paul is saying is, the glory man came alive when you received Christ and believed. Amen. And now, this man wants to influence this man. I'll prove it to you by the scripture. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he shall quicken yes. your mortal body. In other words, if you walk in this spirit long enough, this flesh man gets quickened. Ask Enoch about it. He walked in this long enough that this left out of here. Right? Mm -hmm. Philip, what did Philip do? Philip needed to go talk to a eunuch somewhere, so this spirit took this man and said, whoop. He left that spot and he, boom, translated back down on this spot. He spoke to that man about Christ. Then all of a sudden, you're talking about Star Trek. Beam me up, Scotty. That's what happened. Boom. He leaves that unit, and he comes back down in another place. And I, I don't want to sound freaky or weird, but this same thing still can happen today. We live in the same, same testament that Philip lived in. We live in the same testament, right? Same power, same Christ. So what we want to do in church is we want to teach people. This is why the scripture never said go out and get people saved. He said, go make disciples. In other words, it's, you, want, you want people to come to Christ, but the job of the church is teach them how to walk it out. And that's why we don't have, you know, you'll ask a church, we had an event, 57 people got saved. You say, well, where are they? Most of the time they won't even be there. I believe some of them didn't get saved. Some of them had wrong information, but we never taught them how to be mature. And that's what we want to do with our church, okay? Amen? Amen. I'm making any sense to anybody here. All right, the word said is a medical term like breaking your bone. So we're stuck because our mind, guys, this is powerful for me. It don't have to be powerful to you. I'm stuck where I am because my mind gets set on what's happened to me. My history. I put it like this. You can't see your destiny because you're stuck in your history. Your mind, don't it? Well, if somebody hurts you, aggravates you, upsets you, how many times will you rehearse that in your mind? How many people will you, you will mutter it under your breath? You, I can't believe they treated me that way. I can't believe that happened to me. We will rehearse it. Why? We set our minds on what's happened to us in the past. And here's what the word of the Lord is. If you have a broken bone, in order to set that bone right, it had to first be what? It had to be broken to be set. You know what's happening to us in the church? Our old mindsets are being broken. Mm -hmm. So they can be reset on the things of God. Amen. That's what's happening to me. I don't know about you. But it astounds me every day and the stuff I used to believe that I don't believe anymore. Amen? Amen. We just had a power surge or something. So here's what's happening. People are trying to add God to what they already know. I'm going to add God to my culture. I'm going to add God to what Grandmama taught me. I'm not saying everything Grandmama taught you is bad. I'm going to add God to what I already know. And you can't do that. You can't add God to what you know. you got to let go of what you know and know the things of God. So you want to break your mindset. Now look, this is not popular and it's not even fun. Because let me tell you, when you have to start, start unlearning some things you thought you knew, you're going to have some days that are hard to go Amen. All right, let me just talk to you about Revelation for five, eight minutes, and I'll let you go here now. Revelation 2, let me read 2, 1 through 7. This is about the church at Ephesus. And, um, I'll come back to it next week. I'll just skim over it because it's about 12 o'clock. Revelation 2 says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, 
walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. You persevered and have patience and labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you've fallen, repent, do the first works, or else I'll come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, you hate the deeds of the Galatians, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I'll give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay. The church in Ephesus is the first church you encounter in the book of Revelation. And let me tell you, every one of them churches in Revelation correlate to something for us today. They're not about a past church. As a matter of fact, the entire book of Revelation is not necessarily about the future. The word revelation means the unveiling of Jesus Christ, okay? So this church, the word Ephesus means, the, in, the, in the original language, the, the word Ephesus means permitting. And what had happened to the Ephesus church is they had had some people come in, some false apostles we just read about, and they tested them out. Why were they false apostles? Because they kept trying to add to God something they already believed or knew, and it made them false. You can't add anything to God or take anything away from it. So they had tested those guys out, found some of them to be liars, and gotten rid of them. And that was a good thing, Jesus said. But that church had also permitted some things to come into their church, which was being added on to Jesus. And we know, according to the teaching of Paul, is Jesus plus nothing. You can't add anything to Jesus. He is perfect in every way. Amen? Amen. So you got this church in Ephesus, and Jesus is saying uh, in the beginning of the chapter that... Um, he has the angels of the church. You can interpret that word pastor or angel. He has them in his hand. All right. So how many, were, why was he holding the, the, the leaders of the church in what? A hand. How many fingers? Five. Grace. All right. I'm holding leadership in grace. And he says, I'm walking through the lampstands which are the churches. So here's the person of grace, the person of Jesus, who's holding leadership, and he's walking in the midst of the church. Amen? So what does that let me know? Jesus is walking in the midst of every church calling on his name. And so he's holding leadership in his hand, and that's what we should do. We should be graceful to leadership because leadership needs all the grace they can get. Amen? Amen. You say it again. Amen. Amen. Then he said, I can't tell you how many times I've had this preached to me. You've lost your first love. If you just go back to when you first got saved and act like you acted when you first got saved, boy, you'd be all right then because you have lost your first love. That's the wrong definition of first love. You know what first love is? First love is God's love for you. God loved you when? First. You have lost the mindset that God loves me. You've lost your first love. That's the problem with a lot of us. We think it's our love for God. No, 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 no. Our love for God is imperfect at best. God's love for me is beautiful and perfect. And here's what this church had done. Same as a lot of us. They forgot about God's gracious gift of love that he loved them first. He loved you first. And Jesus is saying, don't get the mindset of forgetting your first love. Your first love is the way you think about yourself is my father loves me at all times. That's the mindset of a believer. No matter what comes, good day, bad day, Sinful day, terrible day, my father loves me. That's the mindset that I need to keep. That's what Jesus said. You've lost the concept, the mindset of your first love. Now, it's not bad for you to love God. I'm not saying that. But never put your faith in your love for God. Because how many people know that's up and down? Amen. There ain't no more lying about it. You can be here dancing a jig on Sunday and on Tuesday. But God's love what? His love never fails. Amen. So what's your mindset you want to develop? Don't let anything, what did we say? They permitted. 
Don't let anything or anybody preach to you, teach to you, tell you anything other than God's love for you. That's the order of events. Amen. And if they do, they're trying to develop the wrong mindset in you. You've lost your first love. He said what? Repent, which means what? Change your mind. Get what mindset? God loves me. That's the mindset I want to develop. God loves me. Okay? So I said it means permitted. He said, I know your works, your labor, your patience. He speaks positively to them, and they do it in the name of Jesus. How many people know it's not wrong to have works if you do it in the right spirit? Amen? Amen. So we're not sitting back doing nothing. We've got to be doing something. All right, one more verse. John 2, 15. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in it. Boy, here's another verse. They beat me up in the head. Wow. If you love the things of the world, boy, the love of the Father is not in you. And they would preach, and uh, if I didn't have such a sore throat, I would try to do some of that hacking for you. Know, do to me. And they would say things like, if you lay this down... <laughs> If you'd put this down, if you'd stop doing this, if you'd stop clubbing, if you'd start. I'm not saying those things or you should do them. I'm just saying they would always say, you love the things of the world. And because you love the things of the world, the Father's love is not in you. But that is not what this scripture is saying. This is what it's saying. If you develop a mindset that is geared toward the world, you will forget that the Father loves you. Mm -hmm. And if you forget the Father, that's what it means. The Father's love in your consciousness won't be in you because you're going after you develop the love for the world system. And here's what the world system does. And I'm not trying to put anything down by saying this. But the world system says what? Self-improvement. Let's get better. I mean, come on. How many New Year's resolutions are we going to make? We make them every year. We don't keep them every year. The world system says what? I'll do better. I'll try harder. I'll work harder. I'll just try to do better. I'll read more. I'll be a better husband. I'll be a better wife. It's always about self-improvement, self-improvement. But what? God wants you to remember he loves you like you are. God loves you. So you don't want to love the world system. Have a mindset. Be like John the Beloved. He called himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Maybe you ought to get up every day this week, look in that bathroom mirror and say, I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. That's the mindset you need to have. That's what's going on. Here. He's saying, don't lose your first love. Okay? Come on, stand to your feet. <clears throat> I'll leave there. We'll pick you back up. Um, don't lose. how much you're in two places. Yeah. <coughs> okay, guys, we live where? On earth? But where does the Bible say our citizenship is? In heaven. You live here, but you're not from here. What does it say you are? An alien, right? not from here. This is not your place. Right. You're from here. Yeah. And what did God do? Made you an ambassador of his kingdom where? Here. And what should you do? Be reflecting how this place is. When people see you, they should see how it is in heaven. Oh, that's how it is in heaven. Wow. That's what attracted people to Jesus. Because he operated like heaven up. That's why nobody ever died in his presence. Every, people were healed in his presence. I can't say everybody because not every scenario there was healing. So God sent you here through your mother's womb to place you here as an ambassador, but you're not from here. So where should your mind be set? On where you're from. That's right. On things above. So I'm going to live here, but my mind is not going to be set on here. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. And how do I watch the first law of keeping my mind set on heaven? Jesus just said it. Remember your first love. The way I keep my mind, and we're going to go through several of them as we go through this study. I keep my mind on heaven and led by the Spirit. 
when I remember my father loves me. I am his. And here's basically what happened. Dr. Hiles told me he went on a, a, a diet. And he, he said the way the Lord showed him was a lot. He, he didn't stop eating anything. He just started eating more good things. In other words, he ate every time he got hungry. But he ate more fruit, he ate more vegetables, he ate more salads. And so what? The good replaced the bad. Mm -hmm. He didn't stop doing the bad. No. He just started eating more good things. And when you eat more good, you ain't got room enough to eat bad. That's the way it works in the spirit. You don't stop committing sins. You what? You walk in the spirit and you automatically, those things wash away out of your life. They replace the bad things. We always try to stop. Like we can just stop doing this and stop doing that. And the more we try, the worse we got. Or at least me. But we're not trying to stop. We're not saying those things are beneficial. They're not. Paul said, look, I am free to do anything I want to do. But not everything is beneficial for me to do. That's, for, that's a level of maturity we want to get to right there. Can you go out and do anything you want to and still be saved? The answer is yes. But why would you want to? Why would you want to? If I remember Daddy loves me, then I'm a whole lot less likely to fall over into some, get into some area I don't want to get into. Every time I've ever got trapped in something bad, I lost my first love. I forgot how much Daddy really and you know when I got out of it? When I remember. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. That song's right. You keep telling yourself that. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Don't lose your first love, okay? All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, make up the difference in what I am and what was needed. We pray for those, Lord, who are sick today and ask for your healing to rest and be upon them. And for those who are traveling back home today from holidays and traveling away for holidays, your grace to be upon them. Bless your people, Lord. Cause your face to shine on them. Lord, extend your grace and mercy to them. Let them know how much you love them. Let the mind that was in Christ be in them.